Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I just want to start by saying a huge, huge welcome to all my new subscribers to my channel. I honestly appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. I'm so happy um, that my channel is growing and I can't wait to put loads and loads of new content out there for you guys. So if you do have any uh, requests, video requests, then let me know in the comments below. I read every one of my comments and I will try and do most of the videos that you guys ask for. So today I'm doing a video for my wedding series. I can't actually remember what episode this is, I think it might be like episode 5. Um, but today what I'm going to be talking about, because my engagement ceremony is coming up in approximately four weeks, just under four weeks actually, so it's actually on the 1st of July, which and it's the 5th of June right now, so less than a month now, which I can't believe. So because that is happening, um, I just wanted to speak about the Punjabi Sikh culture and why we do this engagement ceremony, why I'm calling it a ceremony. So I just want to talk about what's involved for the girl and what's involved so for the bride and what is involved for the groom as well. And I'm just going to talk through like a step by step process and also what each of the um, traditions mean. So where, why we do what we do basically. So to begin with, and this will be the first part of our engagement ceremony, um, we do what is called the Gurmai. And that is basically to symbolise the girl's family welcoming the groom and sort of um, giving their blessings, officially announce that you know, they're in, the bride and groom are engaged. So this isn't the ring ceremony or anything like that. This usually, this can occur without the bride being present. So how we're doing it at our engagement ceremony is that this is going to actually take place before I make my entrance into the party. So um, what usually happens at the Gurdmai is it, usually the men from the bride's family, so the father of the bride, uncles, brothers, cousin brothers, etc. They all walk in and they usually walk in with baskets. So these baskets consist of various different things. So the baskets consist of two baskets which have fruits of your choice. So you can have exotic fruits, normal fruits, whatever fruits you want. Maybe, you know, if you're having a love marriage like we are, then we call it love marriage or arranged marriage because you either have one or the other. Um, so if you have a love marriage and you know what fruit your groom and his family like, it'd probably be better to put fruits that they actually like and enjoy eating because then you're obviously gifting these baskets to the groom side of the family and they're the ones that will be eating this fruit. So two baskets or however many baskets you want of fruit and then you usually have a few other baskets with um, matiai which is Indian sweet and um, or you can have chocolates, you can do some baskets with chocolates and uh, usually the matiai is actually put on a tal which is like a metal tray, round tray um, and what we do with these baskets and trays, we dress them up in, um, so we put cellophane and ribbon and just make it look all pretty and we, so the men from the bride's family walk in with these baskets and gift them to the groom's family and then the Gurdmai ceremony takes place on stage. So I say on stage that because that's how we're doing it but I know a lot of other people do the Gurdmai in the Gurdwara which is the Sikh temple. Um, so it can be done either way, it just completely depends on how the families prefer to do it. So we are doing the Gurmai and the Junni and the Ring Ceremony all in one party because we, you know, it's basically the same, it symbolises the same thing. So it symbolises the engagement of the bride and the groom. So we thought we'd just all put it into one. What usually happens next is they gift, um, so the bride's family gift the groom with either a gold gura, so a gura is this bracelet and you can recognise Sikhs, because most Sikhs wear this, really all of them should wear it but some decide not to, choose not to, but this is a gura and um, you, so the groom either receives a gift of a gold gura or they 
receive a gift or a watch or something like that. So we're gifting a gold gola, um, and again, it might take place on the stage and it might take place in the Gurdwara or the Sikh temple. So once this ceremony takes place, I think what they do is they just feed the groom some sweet as a blessing. Um, they give money as a blessing. We call this sugan or shugan. People pronounce it differently. So next after this, what would usually happen if you were having it as a party? When I make my entrance, we'd walk in, the bride walks in to the venue where they're holding the engagement, ring ceremony, etc. And um, usually the groom welcomes the bride and he gives her a bouquet of flowers or whatever he wants to give her, um, you know, just as a nice gift. And then obviously the ring ceremony takes place. So it's up to the groom whether he wants to get down on one knee or whether they both just want to sit next to each other and the groom places the bride's engagement ring on her wedding finger. But obviously I've already been proposed to um, so I am already engaged, but not officially engaged the Indian way. So before my engagement on the 1st of July, I will have to give my ring back to my fiancé so that he can basically get engaged to me again <laughs> on the night. So, um, so I'm going to have to give my ring back to him and then the ring ceremony will take place and that's literally just him putting the ring back on my finger. I know in India some people actually exchange rings both ways, so the bride gives the groom a ring and the groom gives the bride a ring but in this country and in a lot of westernised countries we only put a ring on the groom's finger when it's the wedding uh, the wedding ring and that obviously takes place at the wedding so you have to remember that some people have this engagement and journey ceremony could my just before the wedding like maybe even a week before whereas we're having it just over a year before so we're having it quite far in advance, whereas some people might only do it a week before, so they probably already have the groom's ring ready. So that's another reason why they might um, want to put the ring on at the ring ceremony, because the wedding might be next week. So it varies um, depending on the couple and their situation and how they're doing everything. Um, but this is just how we're doing it. And then after the ring ceremony, then starts the Junni ceremony, where, it, where the groom side of the family gift the bride. Um, so what usually happens here, they also come with baskets. Again, they can put whatever they want, fruits, um, Indian sweets, etc. It's always something sweet because the sweet symbolises... Um, sort of again blessings when you bless someone or if something good has happened you usually give them something sweet to eat so um they come with sweets as well and baskets and also the other thing they have is a basket for the bride now in that basket for the bride um is an outfit that they give to her and that outfit symbolizes them accepting the bride into their family and accepting her as their own daughter um, usually the suit that they gift or a sari that they gift is either red or pink because they're usually the sort of engagement wedding colours um, and then with that they also gift bangles they gift a gold set so by set I mean a gold necklace and matching gold earrings um, they also gift um, makeup and you know just little bits whatever they feel like gifting to the bride so this comes mainly from the groom's mother and also his sisters so sisters cousin sisters etc so, so the junni ceremony the sisters of the groom actually play a big part in this because it's placing the junni on the bride's head and that symbolizes her being a part of the family now um so what usually happens is that the groom's mum and dad gift the gold set to the bride and then once that's done, all the sisters come onto the stage and then they just pretend they don't really have to do, the, they don't actually have to put your makeup on and everything. Some people do, like some brides go into the party and they don't have lipstick on or something, so then the sisters can then go and put the lipstick on. And This is again all part of the blessings and welp welcoming the bride into the family, so this is all part of the ceremony. 
and um, they put a little bit of nail varnish on and all these little bits and bobs and then that's basically the chimney ceremony done after all that, all the pictures are taken etc and then the Sugan slash Shugan, loads of people say it differently, um, starts and this is literally, no exaggeration, all the guests in the at the party or at the engagement um, they come on to the stage and give you their blessings by gifting you whatever they feel like gifting you whether it's five pounds ten pounds etc you know and they just take a picture with the a newly engaged couple and that's basically the ceremony part complete after that literally after that we've decided to cut a cake um you know just to celebrate and just in, for everyone to enjoy the party for the rest of the night so open the dance floor and everyone have a good night I forgot to explain so in case for those of you who are watching and they, you don't know what Junni is so Junni is usually the thing the scarf type thing that we put on our head um, and it comes with the outfit that we use so it comes with all of our Indian outfits um, so when we're in a temple we usually wear this on our head the reason why this is placed on our head by the sisters or some people do it by the mother-in-law um, is just you know another part of symbolizing that they're welcoming their new daughter-in-law into the family things you would need for that part of the ceremony would be bindi um, which is I think everyone knows what bindi is, what you stick there on your forehead, um, lipstick, maybe eyeliner, nail varnish, um, bangles, sindoor which is the red powder that the groom puts here on the bride to symbolise that they're married or they're, you know, an item basically. Um, so there's loads of little bits and pieces to it. But I hope, you know, you found it helpful. I don't know if any of my viewers are getting married as well. Um, but if you are, I hope this video helped you a little bit and helped you understand a little bit more. Um, because I know that I had to do a lot of research and asking my mum and dad what this means, what that means, what we need to do. Um, because there is a lot to it. And I'm sure I'll be learning a lot more as time goes by. And I'm sure I'll be learning a lot more for the wedding as well. Um, but I just wanted to make this video and just let you guys know what I've been up to. This is literally what I've been doing. I've just been planning and preparing everything for this engagement ceremony. Um, I've been collecting bits and pieces. So I've now got the baskets. Um, we haven't got the fruits and stuff yet, obviously. So that's probably just going to be brought the day before. Uh, we've got the groom's gold, so we've got my fiancé's gold for him. But, you know, fingers crossed, it will all be worth it. Everything will go perfectly as planned, hopefully. Um, but the one big, big thing that I would say is make lists. Have one notebook, wedding planner, engagement planner, whatever you have. Have one book which is dedicated to planning this. I know it's only the engagement and a lot of people might not be that fussed about it. But even if you're not that fussed about it, you do really, really need to be organised with it. Yeah, let me know what you guys think of this video down below. If you found it helpful, please give it a big, big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe as well if you're not already subscribed to my channel. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!